Okay, now we're going to go back to math. Uh, we did one example of capacity, very simple one, and that's when we have output measures, okay? We're looking at customers, products, uh, uh, patients, you know, we're looking at the output of the process, remember input, transformation, output, and we can count them. So it's easy to understand how many uh, I, I, I did and how many I could do to capacity and then do all the math, right? So this is what this slide is talking about. So we did the first one, output measures. Sometimes I have to do with input measures, okay? Especially when I have different products, different mix, setup times, different uh, demands for multiple products. So they're not only customers, I have different types of customers and blah, blah, blah. So that's the one that we're going to look at. And for this one, what we're doing is we're taking the time uh, that it takes to produce the demand and we're dividing by uh, how much I have available. So if, if you think about it, it's the same logic as the other uh, math, right? Utilization equals to output divided by capacity. In this case, we're just changing. Instead of the output is the hours that I'm producing. And instead of the capacity is the time that I have available. So it's time to produce the demand divided by total time, right? And the result is the same thing is the utilization or if it's more than one is actually how many resources I need, okay? So let's go back. Uh, that's the math, that's the formula. Uh, processing time divided by available, okay? And there's a bunch of different letters now. D, upper uh, case D is uh, demand, uh, lower case P is the processing time. Right, so let's say that I have you know, it takes five minutes to do a taco. I need to produce a thousand tacos. How much time I need? Well, a thousand times five, five thousand minutes. So that's how many minutes I need, okay, to supply my demand. Uh, in the lower part, that's going to be how much time available I have, okay, per unit of time. So let's say my, you know. What equipment do you use to make tacos? We need to fry, we need to put it in an oven or something like that, right? So to, to uh, you know, my equipment is available how many hours in a day, and then I can find out how many equipment I need, okay? So the number, the number of hours available times one minus capacity cushion, because uh, I cannot produce during the time that I plan a capacity cushion to happen. So it's either be you know 10% capacity cushion. So I want to be I want to have enough resources to produce with the up to 90% utilization. So that's the formula: d times p divided by n, which is the total number of, of hours available, uh, times one minus c. And to make it a little bit more difficult, other uh, uh, it's the same logic, but other problems, especially the homework and one that we're going to do in class as well, uh, just gives you uh, multiple products. So what will happen if I have different products with different demands and with different setup times? Okay, and we didn't talk about what a setup time is, so I'm going to give you an explanation of that. So setup time is the time between doing one batch of one product, finishing one batch, and starting to doing the second batch of the next, the, starting to do the second the batch of the next product. Okay. So imagine our classes, right? So our classes are a batch. You get into the class, 30 students now, teach to you guys 30 at the same time, and you get out. So that's a batch. I'm not teaching one student at a time. I'm teaching a bunch of students in, at once. And what happened between one class and the next one? Is that immediately you have another class? No, there's a 20 minutes between classes. Why? Because you guys have to go to your next class and the faculty has to come from another class, right? So that 20 minutes is what we call the setup time, okay? 20 minutes is the setup time, is the time from one batch to the next batch and that's very common in manufacturing that's happening in all equipment okay you're doing you know let's say you're doing uh, baking a bread and now we need to bake a cake right the temperature is not the same so you have to take out the different cupcakes that you have and then you're going to put the bread and you have to set up the temperature it take half an hour to change from 300 and 
325 to 375 uh, 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 Fahrenheit. Uh, from one batch to another, so sometimes that equipment will just be waiting there to get to the right temperature, right? Sometimes there's a painting process, you need to clean it, in, and you need to put the other paint, so setup times are very, very uh, uh, common in manufacturing processes, right? Uh, sometimes there is like the stamping process, and you have to put the moldings in, you know, because the parts are different, and blah, 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 so... Set of times is very, very often happen. Okay, what's the difference in this math here? Okay, this math, I'm taking the DP, same DP that we saw in the last slide, so demand times processing time, plus the demand divided by Q, and Q will be the number of units in each lot. Okay, so remember, we have all the 30 students get in, 30 students get out. What's the average time per student? Well, we're going to take the demand, and divided by 30 because that's the batch size that's how many people were at the same time and then you multiply that by the setup time that the example that I gave you was the 20 minutes uh, between classes okay and that's you have that for product one then you need to add product two the same thing you could have a different demand a different processing time a different lot size and a different setup time All right is that set, set of time okay I said it twice. Uh, so, and you take all that, some for all products, boom, divided by n times 1 minus c, which is the same thing we saw before. n is the uh, available time for one equipment, 1 minus c, c is the capacity cushion. 